can you point out maybe one or two in this special year for sports with the Olympics, with the uh, Euro Championships, with the UEFA Champions League final like every year? What can you, for example, just point out to be something that really caught your eye? I think there's been some fantastic activation at both Rio and at the Euros. Uh, what I really liked about Rio was the switch that some sponsors made mid-cycle to take onto account some of the grassroots feelings of the local uh, uh, communities and environments in Brazil, especially to take into account ecological issues, uh, social cultural factors, so that they adapted their activation uh, in the kind of months leading up to the games to take into more understanding about the local conditions. And I really think that that is really important in global uh, event activation, because so often global brands at big global events are seen as being uh, separated from the actual fans that go to the stadium uh, and the kind of realities of what the fans and the supporters are going through on the ground. You talk a lot about bravery, invention, innovation, yeah. and, but we see a lot of technology in every activation almost. Uh, are we getting near to the limits of technology or what else can we expect from it? My initial response to that is that there are no limits to technology and technology will always change and the speed of change is only ever going to increase. Having said that, one of the challenges in the activation industry and the advertising industry and the media industry overall is that whereas we had 100, 150 years to learn how to craft brilliant press ads, and then we had about 70 years to learn how to make brilliant TV work. Now we're only getting a matter of a few months to learn how to activate on Snapchat or WeChat or Instagram. And if you're not on it and moving in it very, very fast, you almost lose your opportunity because of the speed of change. And I think we're going to have to reassess what it means to do brilliantly crafted work because you are never going to get the same level of skills and craftsmanship in two months that filmmakers and directors and producers and actors and strategists and planners got in the mediums when we had decades and decades to learn how to do great work. That's why you pointed out some amazing uh, TV campaigns as well. That's right. And I think it's important not to forget the, uh, the vital and emotional connection that brilliant craftsmanship gets. And that creative, artistic core that drives not just the kind of sports sponsorship or activation, but also the wider advertising world is so vital, important, no matter how much technology and how many huge data sets you have to work with. What do you expect, for example, from virtual reality? I think we are at a stage now where we're waiting for the second step. So we've seen a lot of leading edge, uh, putting our feet in the water, testing it out at stadiums to small groups at events. Until the head, VR headsets go mass market, we won't see the second step come. And of course, it's not really going to be the sports or the sponsorship industry or the advertising industry that drives that mass market move. That will be more up to industries like the games, the computer games world and the media and entertainment world because those will be the core drivers of whether virtual reality headsets go genuinely mass market and mainstream or not. And of course, there are other technological versions about to hit the market. Recently, I was lucky enough to try out Microsoft's HoloLens and how they're starting to work with the NFL in American football. That was the example that I saw it, which is a headset-based technology, but it's holograms projected rather than virtual reality internalized. And that's a different type of technology. So we're going to see more than just the current versions. And it's still unclear as to which iteration is going to be the iteration that goes mass and mainstream, if in fact it does. 
how would you evaluate sport the conference what do you think is the um, position or how important is it for the region first of all I'd say there's a fantastic atmosphere at the conference and there is a kind of open hunger for new ideas creativity it's really interesting to speak with people from all across the landscape uh, lots of different areas of the business but the thing that they share is this kind of hunger for new ideas and innovation uh, and passion and also when you combine that with the passion that the people have for their sports actually what it is that takes place on the pitch and the field I think that is the recipe that makes our industry so special and why I and the other people at Activative enjoy working in it so much and you can feel it alive in this conference. Thank you very much, enjoy Sporto. Great pleasure, thank you.